Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to be looking at how to back up our models and settings from EFOS. So I got a message the other day from Fred asking how he can back up his SD card before performing a firmware update just in case there's an issue and he needs to go back to the older version. Now as I was writing the reply it sort of dawned on me that actually writing it down it reads a lot more complicated than it actually is. So I'm going to do a quick video on which files we need to back up but I'm going to take it one step further and show you how to create like a master restore file for your SD card. The thing is if we take a backup each time there's a lot of files that are repeated that we you know we don't need to keep backing up it just wastes space. So what we're going to have at the end of this video is a generic folder but if we get a brand new SD card like I'm going to show you in this video we can just put that folder onto the SD card and then copy across our latest backup which is only the information that we need for that backup. So this actually came at a great time I'm currently on 1.0.13 there's now a 1.0.14 out so I need to do a backup anyway and what I'm going to do is swap over to this SD card. So what we can prove is that even if you lose all the information, say your SD card is wiped, you can use a brand new one and you'll get everything back. Right, so what I'm going to do first is plug the transmitter in and separate out the two different things, the long-term stuff and the immediate stuff, which we yeah, could change quite often. Of course, this is EFOS, so what I'm going to do is hold down the enter button and press the power button to get it into bootloader and then I'm just going to put my USB in the slot on the top which as you can now see it has USB plugged on screen so we're all ready to go and head over to the computer. Right so the first thing that I'm going to do is just open up Windows Explorer so this will be Finder if you're on a Mac. Sorry I don't have a Mac, I don't use a Mac, I don't really know what the stuff is on there. So I'm just going to drag this to the left of the screen and then we've got a bit of room to work. So you can see I, I always name my SD cards and I'll, I'll actually show how to do this later in the video. And this is the SD card from the X20. You also have this USB drive here which is the flash storage inside it but you don't need to touch that because everything that comes with a firmware update will yeah, completely cover that side of things. It's only the SD card we're interested in. So what do we have on here? Right, so let's have a look at the folders. As standard, you'll have an audio folder, you'll have bitmaps. Firmware is something that I've created so that I can update firmware on receivers and you know, the transmitter if necessary. Models you'll have because that's where your model data is stored. Screenshots you won't have unless you've set up screenshots and actually taken them. So again, this is screenshots is something that you know, is throw away really. So I wouldn't bother with a backup for this. You usually take a screenshot, use it and then discard it. And then we have this radio.bin file, which is actually our settings on the transmitter. So what of these do we sort of have long term and which ones get updated frequently? Right. So first, let me just create a couple of folders. I'm just going to stick it on the desktop, obviously. You might want to put it somewhere better, so like a, an RC folder you have somewhere on your computer or even you know, cloud storage, something like that. But I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this... So what that will have is stuff that I can just use all the time. So as an example, if we create a model image for a new model, so in generic, let's do this one first, I'm going to create an audio folder and I'm going to create a bitmaps folder. And also, if you do want to have a firmware, for, I'll show you what's in mine. So I have receivers and transmitters. We'll just dive into receivers. But yeah, like I say, this folder isn't here by default. It's something that I've created and it's sort of covered in my firmware update video, which I'll put a link for in the top corner. So I'm just going to copy that straight onto that um, generic folder. And while that's going, let's go into bitmaps. Now you want to go into bitmaps on the SD card as well, because there's actually two folders. There is user and there's GPS. GPS. Now one of the later updates allowed you to actually use your GPS to position where you are on the map. So if I go into Paris, this is just a map of Paris. And if you create more map data, you can put it in this GPS folder and then you know, where you're flying, you'll get a pointer on the map of where you are. 
And obviously you need a GPS module on the plane and then bring the coordinates back with telemetry for this to work. But um, yeah, you, you'll be able to sort of populate this with other locations. And also there is the user folder, which is your model images, which I had a video on how you can set these. So I'll put a link up in the corner. So because these, you know, both can change from the default firmware, what we want to do is copy these both across. So that's our bitmaps. Audio is slightly different because we don't actually need everything. So if I go into audio and then go into audio on my generic SD card, you may have a lot of different language folders. If you do a, a firmware update on the SD card zip file, you'll have multiple language folders. And some people just copy the whole lot across, but I just personally copy the, the languages that I use. So I only have the EN folder here. And in there is just a system folder. And all that is, is the generic speech that comes with the radio. So this is updated every time with firmware. It comes with all the firmware. So we don't actually need to back that up. All we need to back up is the custom sound files that we've made or sound packs. So say you've installed the Amber sound pack, that will be in the root of the audio folder. So all we need to do is just copy the files. So I'm going to select all the files and then copy those into audio. So once that's in there, we're basically done with our generic folder. Everything else can be used as just a pure backup whenever you want a backup. So next up, I'm going to actually just create a backups folder. And in there, let me put that to the left. I'll create another folder and I'll call it 1.0.13. And you know, you, you could give it the date that you do the backup just in case you want to do multiples from that. But to be honest, if, a back, if it's working and you want to do another backup on the same firmware version, just overwrite the ones you've got. So we have our 1.0.13 folder, which is the current firmware I have. So what we'll do is we'll go to the root of the SD card and the first thing that we want to copy across is this radio.bin file, which is all our settings on the radio. And then we just need to copy across this models folder. And that's it. We've already got firmware, bitmaps and audio sorted. We don't need screenshots. That's all we really need to get back to where we were if we do lose the SD card. So next, what we need to do is update our firmware on the transmitter. Now, what I'm going to do is speed through this process. I do have a full video, uh, which I'll link in the top corner. There's two versions of the video, one for people who aren't overly computer literate, and there's one for people who are, um, and both are linked in each other's descriptions. So no matter which one I put up in the, the link, you can get to the right video for you. I'm trying to get this video so that people who aren't so computer literate can still follow it. If you do have any problems, just leave me a comment and I'll try and get back with what you need to do. But all this stuff is fairly straightforward so far. It's just creating folders, which you just right click to get this menu up and then new folder. There's, there's nothing we've really done that's uh, tricky at this point. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is download the firmware. As I say, I'm not going to go into massive detail with this. I'm just going to go through quickly um, because it's covered elsewhere. So just EFOS releases and I want X20S Flex. I'm just going to stick it on the desktop. Uh, this is the one difference from my old video. They were naming the card contents and the flash contents as X20, X20S. It's now been uniformly named to Tandem. I did make a note of this in the video description, but while I'm here, I might as well mention it. So if you're using an X20, X20S or X20 HD, when that comes out, you'll be using these Tandem files. So I'm just going to download them again. I'm going to stick them on my desktop. Because I'm going for a new SD card, before I put this in the transmitter, I'm just going to put it in the computer just to make sure that everything is set up right on the SD card. So I'll get a new Windows Explorer. For that, I hold down the Windows key and pressed E, but it's the same as right clicking here and just going File Explorer. It'll get you a new window. Right, so we should have a new USB drive, which is empty, which this is. That's obviously our uh, flash drive there. So if I right click on this, we want fat, which is great. 
and yeah everything is formatted fine so what i'm going to do is because this is going in the x20 i'm going to rename this to x20 s sd which at the moment will be a bit confusing because i have two of them but uh, going forward it will be absolutely fine so if i refresh that should come up with the right name there we go right so that's the old one this is the new one so what i could do is just show you copying across to the sd card here just imagine it's in the radio because it's exactly the same process so what i'm going to do is i don't need to see that old one anymore that's in the radio we can ignore it so i will find the tandem sd zip file and the first thing that i'll do is copy that across bitmaps we can just copy straight across and audio like i mentioned in here there's lots of different languages i just cherry pick the ones i want so to do that we'll right click we'll go new folder call it audio go into the audio folder and i'm just going to copy the en folder across because that's the language that i use if you want to use french or if you want to use multiple languages then copy whatever you want so that is the sd card contents from the new firmware zip file copied across so now what we're going to do is go to our generic sd card i'm just going to select all of this and i'm going to copy it across if there's conflicts it's because there's a version that already exists in the firmware so what we can do is just check out what that is so this is all just standard stuff so it's what comes basically with a firmware so it's the paris map and a few models that you get as standard so what i'm going to do is just uh, leave them as the ones that are already on the sd card just save a bit of copying but anyway that is our generic folder back across now what we need to do is restore our backup so we go in here and copy that across so that there is our full sd card restored to how it was originally so what I'm going to do before progressing any further is just power down the transmitter and swap the new SD card in just so we can carry on as normal. Right, so you can see this is the old SD card. The new one was white, this one's sort of grey and red. So you can see it's a different SD card in there. And the reason why I did this is because we need to copy the firmware file across to the transmitter. Right, so let's get our Explorer window back. And what we're going to do is you can see that's already opened. So let's go to our X20 flash drive, which I've heard you can actually rename this and it doesn't make any difference. So what I'm going to do is rename it X20 S. So now we have a nice, nice folder that we know is the flash drive. That is the SD card. So what we'll do is get our flash zip file and all we need to do is copy this straight in. Now, if you get a problem uh, where it says there's not enough space, if, if we have a look at the properties, you can see that this is only sort of six megabytes. And sometimes there are files that are new and the old files aren't deleted. So if you get that problem, just delete this folder here on your flash drive and then copy the new one in. This is going to take time, isn't it? I should have probably just not done it. But if you get issues, that's the way to do it good excuse for a tea break anyway so now we have a blank flash storage we can copy the bitmaps across and again this is going to take a little bit of time so i can finish my tea but once this is done we know we only have the images that we need for that release again if you don't have issues you don't really need to delete the old ones but at some point you may find that you need to there we go so that's our flash zip file all copied across we're done with that we now have basically our transmitter and our sd card both restored to how they were before the update but also with the updated stuff on there so now what we need to do is go back to our sd card get our new firmware and just copy this bin file across and once this is done we can pull out the usb cable and that obviously will update the firmware for us. So there we go, the firmware is now writing to the drive. And yeah, once this is done, everything should be back to normal. So 
yeah, more weighting. All right, there we go, firmware is done. So what we can do, is, oh, USB cable is already out, of course. So let's get rid of bootloader and let's go into the transmitter. So we can see our, you know, our model is absolutely fine. If I go model select, I have all my models. Don't worry about the duplication, it's because I was experimenting with stuff. There is supposed to be two of each model, that's not an error. And yeah, all our images are there for the models. So, wonderful. Right, let's go back out of that. And of course, we can see in the info screen, we're now on 1.0.14. Everything is as it should be, which is wonderful. But if that hadn't gone to plan, well, if there's a problem where you need to roll back to the last firmware, what you'll need to do is go to the GitHub here where you download the firmware from, click on releases, and then go back to the last version that was working fine for you. Obviously download the firmware and the flash and SD card contents from there. And what I would actually do is what I did with a brand new SD card. So completely wipe it, copy across your generic information, then you'll back up from that version that you knew worked and then copy across the flash stuff. And that, that should get you back working on that older version without any problems whatsoever. With some versions of EFOS, it does actually modify the model files when it does the update. So that's why you need to be using the models from that backup. So what I could do now is actually create a new 0.1.14 folder and then copy everything into there from this because you know from initial views, it all seems like everything is working great. I hope this video helps you guys out and it will give you a nice backup that you can go back to whichever version you want and will make you feel much sort of safer and happier. I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon and that will help get this video out to more people so they can learn how to do this too. Thank you very much for watching. Fly models like you stole them and have a great time.